Hey everybody, Retro Gaming Guy here. Today in this video, we're going to unbox, demo, and review this brand new product that I recently found on Amazon. It just got delivered today, and here it is. This is the Regis Joy portable game console. This is a game console built into the backside of a portable monitor here. It comes with two wireless controllers, and it's got over 26,000 retro video games plug and play ready to go on this. So we're going to unbox it. We're going to check out the layout and design of this product. We're going to set it up test it out, we'll tour through everything that comes on here stock, and we'll also dive in to test out the performance of these retro video games. Let's dive into it. All right, guys, here we have our game console. We're gonna get into this now. So it looks like the console itself right here. Let's set that aside. We'll unpack everything first. So we have our power supply cable right here. Let's set that aside. We have a HDMI cable. This is regular HDMI, so regular on both ends. And we have ourselves a user guide right here. So I'm gonna just kind of thumb through this and see what it covers on here. So it walks through the main board within, shows you the uh, layout of that, different connections that can be made there. Shows you how to switch your display resolution. It does seem to be very thorough. It walks through what your contents are here. Um, if you wanted to connect this to external controllers, it tells you exactly how to do that. Definitely seems to be very thorough, so I'm, I'm liking the layout of this. Definitely has some great features, walks you through how to navigate settings within as well, so awesome user guide right there. I'm gonna get rid of this stuff. Now let's take a look at the controllers before we actually dive into the console itself. So these are PlayStation 2 style controllers. We have the dual analog sticks here. Um, definitely feels budget friendly. They're very lightweight, but it feels quite good, very comfortable does seem to have good action on the buttons. You could tell that you know everything is plastic. It doesn't feel super high quality, but the functionality does, seems to, does seem to be there. Um, looks like we, we take a look inside here and see if we have, all right, so it runs on AAA batteries, two AAA batteries for each one. We have our on and off switch right here in the front. A Little bit stiff on the buttons built into the analog sticks. The analog sticks actually seem to be pretty good in terms of performance. We're obviously gonna check this out when we dive into games, but all in all, good experience there. Let me just check out the other one. And I assume we have, I don't know if these come uh, pre-set up or if there's a USB receiver in here. Nope, so these must be Bluetooth, which is always a good option to have. So looking good so far. All right, so let's take a look at the console itself here. I love the fact that this is built in to a screen. I think that's a really unique design. I'm actually surprised we haven't seen that much uh, in the past with products. So here it is. And this is all plastic. It actually feels like it is pretty durable though. So it says right here in the front, Regis Joy. We've got two little characters here, their logo across the front, screen protector on here right now, which I'll peel off momentarily. Now this is all plastic, but it actually feels like decent quality, especially considering the price point of this. Now, what I'm looking at is the side here. We have a bunch of port options over here, so let's kind of comb through them. We have two USB ports. We have a TF slot right here, so that's gonna give us our micro SD card, which is where all of our games and software is going to be. Let me take a look at what size capacity this is. This is 32 gigabytes. So 32 gigabytes on a setup that advertises over 26,000 games is pretty small capacity card. So I'm interested to see if we truly have that many titles on here and what the performance is like. So we have volume controls here with this little dial. Right next to that, we have a settings button. So I imagine that pulls up settings on screen once we power this on. We have a VGA port here, our HDMI port. And then down here is gonna be our power supply cable connection port. So that's where we will go ahead and plug in our power supply cable so we can actually power this on. So down here, it looks like we have speakers or a speaker LED light indicator. And the first one is marked 25%, next one's 50%, 75%, followed by 100%. So I imagine that's how we indicate, you know, our volume levels on here. I would imagine a light lights up as we up and down the volume. So backside here, we have what looks like speakers 
on both sides. We have a little light up here, master power switch right here. So we can flip that to turn it on and off. And then we have a kickstand in the back underneath the kickstand. We have a little screw so we can access the back side here. So let me just set this up. I want to see what angle this kind of sets up at. So uh, it definitely seems to have a little bit of weight. This right off the bat does seem like it's a little bit flimsy. I'm not sure if it's going to hold the weight. You can see it's got some give to it, like it's really struggling. And there we go. It popped right off. So, uh, and that broke off. So, yeah, I think we have a little too much weight for the kickstand here. That's unfortunate to see. And I wasn't, you know, putting pressure on it. I was just kind of bouncing it there. You can see it fell completely off the backside. So, um, that's definitely not impressive. And here is the little um, piece that should be connecting into the base of this. So that's unfortunate. Um, you could just see there is a little bit of weight to this and it's just way too much to be riding on just this little thing right in here that connects the kickstand to the backside of this. So that's unfortunate. Um, I'm going to see if I have a little holder or something that I can prop this up with, or I can actually shoot the video, I guess, facing it, you know, putting the camera over the top here. So that definitely throws a uh, wrench into my wheel here, but hopefully uh, the quality beyond that uh, gets better. So I'm gonna go ahead and peel this back now. All right, so we have a haze on the backside of this that I wanna definitely get off. So I'm gonna grab a cloth and just wipe it down. Might be from you know a little bit of adhesive on the back side of this, but definitely looks kind of grimy right now. I'm gonna wipe it down and then we're gonna go ahead and set this up. All right, guys, so I did clean that up and it looks very good now. It just was a little bit of haze from the back side of the protector. So uh, no issues there. Now I'm going to just kind of leave this flat, I think, and I'll film from overhead and uh, you know we'll test out the performance. All right, guys, so we're going to power this on. I just flipped that switch. I'm putting the batteries into the controller here. Now I just have this sitting upright on my desk here. So it is actually challenging to get a um, clear picture of what's going on here, but we'll hope for the best. So it looks like we got Pandora 50S on here. All right guys, so here we are booted up into this setup right now. Now I'm doing a screen capture right now just so you guys can see everything without any risk of there being a glare or you know, you're struggling to see because videoing this particular screen that is built into this console definitely is a bit of a challenge. It ha you have to be lined up perfectly. So I just thought this would be a more organized approach to touring the system. So controllers work very well. I will say that right off the bat. But let's take a look at how everything is laid out on here. So we have a text list on the left hand side. I do like that we get a video preview for each of these tiles. I think that's an awesome addition to this setup here. And I'm actually surprised given the fact that this is just a 32 gigabyte setup. Now, notice how there is a number in front of each title. That's great because it gives us the count. And if we actually go up the opposite way, you can see over here, the last one is 26,800. That means there's 26,800 games included on here. Here's the downside to that though. Nothing is laid out in alphabetical order, so it makes it extremely difficult to actually locate titles that you're in search of. Now, there is a search bar here, and I'm going to show you guys that momentarily. But for those of us like myself that like to explore retro game collections, oftentimes I'm not thinking of a title, but I'll scroll through the collection and I'll find something that you know I remember from the past. And that is part of this experience. With something like this laid out in the way that we see right here, it's very hard to do that. There's no way to really... You literally have to go page by page, game by game to find things. You can't jump to like, you know, an, a section of games starting with the letter S and navigate through there. So I'm a big Sonic fan. If I wanted to see what they offered for Sonic, it makes it challenging to do that because there's no rhyme or reason to this list. It's just literally thrown in here at random. So we'll, we'll kind of scroll through here just so you get a sense of what I'm talking about. Because at the moment, it looks like everything... Well, at least the middle there, it's all the King of Fighters games. But take a look as we scroll through. So we've got some Street Fighter games here. 
Then it jumps into some other random titles. Then it resumes with some more Street Fighter titles. There are duplicates in here. I will say that. Uh, it's not totally littered with duplicates, but there are definitely some duplicates laid out in here. So we're back into some more Super Street Fighter titles. So again, just very much all over the place, but I will give credit where credit is due. I love the fact that we have the video previews there. So a lot more Street Fighters, and you'll notice that there's different sets in here for like the same titles. So we have a whole bunch of different Street Fighter 2s here. I mean, literally the entire page is Street Fighter 2. Different editions, different sets, but still, you know, you can see how when there's 26,800 titles on here, there's still going to be a lot of duplicates thrown into the mix here. It's cool to have different versions, but how many times are you going to play the same game, even if it does differ ever so slightly? Realistically, as far as I'm concerned anyways, it is unnecessary to bring this many into the, uh, into the mix here. All right, so I've seen enough here. You can see, again, it's definitely all over the place here. Very hard to navigate, but if we hit start on our gamepad controller, we get some additional options here, and this is where we can start to find some cool things. So we have a recent list. So if you were diving into a game, you took a break for the day, you came back a day or two later, or a couple hours later, whatever the case may be, you can easily access everything that you played recently. So these are some titles that I jumped into before I grabbed my camera today. Um, so it is nice to be able to easily access those. Now we have a search bar over here. This is going to be the only tool that you have to actually locate titles that you're looking for. So let's say, I came in here and I'm looking for Sonic titles. I'm going to hit search and I will say this, the controller Y is, this is a PlayStation style controller. It's just labeled very differently with A, B, X, and Y. I'm hitting the Y button, which would be your triangle. If you're looking at a PlayStation style controller, um, that is functioning as X here. So it's very much the opposite of what it should be. You can go in and remap things, but it's kind of a challenge to do that. So let's go in here and let's type in Sonic. So S, We'll navigate over here, O, oh, and it is very sensitive. And one thing I noticed is every time I go over the letter H, like, look, I'm gonna hit D-pad left once, I'm gonna hit it twice, it disappears. For some reason, that spot just doesn't register. Uh, it just skips completely over H over here. Uh, so we've got Sonic, or I'm halfway there, I suppose, but we do have Sonic populating in. We also have some other random titles. I'm not sure what in S-O-N would bring up Simpsons or Michael Jackson's Moonwalker. Very random there, but we've got some Sonic over here. I'm going to type in Sonic completely, though, just to see how it populates in when we do the entire word. Um, so we do definitely have some Sonic here. You see we have Sonic Boom in here twice. Street Fight, uh, Streets of Rage 2, Sonic Wars. Okay, Sonic is in the title. I get why that's there then, so makes sense. So we definitely have a lot of Sonic titles. It is a great way to locate them. We have the video previews for each. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it's an awkward way to kind of navigate things, but it does work out for us. Um, definitely some duplicates in here to say the least. Sonic the Hedgehog 3, Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Yeah, we saw a lot of these on the first page too. So um, there's definitely some hacks in here as well, just kind of thrown in at random, but hey, it, it gives us what we're looking for. I can't hate on it too much. I really can't be too critical. So let me go back to start. Let's open up that menu. Now, we don't have individual console collections. So if you wanted to come in here and you were looking for Sega Genesis, you would really have no way to locate Genesis specific titles and comb through that particular collection on here because it's only broken up into, you of course have the search bar, but you have 3D games, which is awesome because those are the most advanced games here. Everything else is more 2D style. And um, we'll dive into 3D games in a minute. We have a section that is three player and four player games. I think that's a little bit strange that they're pulling together three player and four player. I can understand two player, I can understand four player, but three player is kind of weird, uh, in my opinion, just to have that sectioned off very specifically. But hey, what it is what it is. Um, it is nice to have the little icon there. It tells you how many players can play the, each title. Now we also have a fighting game section. So you're going to find all those million titles um, 
that are the King of Fighters related. And you can see that right here. Um, and let's jump over there, select this. Let's go up. So there's over 1,900 titles um, under the fighting specific category. So let's go back over here. We have an action collection. And this has, right off the bat, I see Metal Slug all over the place there. I wouldn't really classify Metal Slug as action. I would call that more of a shooter, um, but is what it is, I suppose. We have a shooting collection here. And if we comb through here, there's over 3,900 titles in this collection. So I'm not crazy about having it based on categories. I would much rather have this broken down, you know, collection by collection, as we typically see with emulation builds. But um, you know, it's a different spin on things, I suppose. We have a sports collection here. And remember how when we went through the searching section, when I got you H, it kind of just disappeared from screen. So you see here, same situation. You can see the border around shooting. If I go up to three player, four player, you see the border. If I go over to fighting, you see the border. Let me drop down to sports. All of a sudden it disappears. It's something about that specific spot here, which is exactly where H was lined up, that it just does not um, populate in. So we can still select sports, but we can't see confirmation as to what we're highlighting. Very strange. Uh, if we go up, there's 4,375 sports games on here, which is cool. Um, but it's, again, challenging to locate the titles you're looking for. If I wanted to come in here and locate two-on-two -two open ice challenge, for example, my favorite hockey video game of all time, I would have no idea where that's located within here. It's probably included, and we'll actually search it to see if it's included in here. But you know, if it was in alphabetical order, it would be right at the top. You would have your numbers before letters, and you know, it would be probably one of the very first ones, but it's not. So I would have to scroll through here if I didn't use that search function, possibly endlessly to actually locate that. So let's go into start again to open up this menu. We also have a puzzle category over here. Uh, I, I do want to go in and search two on two open ice challenges to see if it's included on here. So let's type in two. And where's our space? Here it is right there. And then we will hit O-N. And let's see if anything populates in. Doesn't. Um, so that's strange. I would think that's in here because I'm seeing a lot of arcade games. So it's two on two open ice challenge. Maybe we try open ice. Definitely sensitive here. So O-P. E-N. All right, there we go. So two on two, and I typed in two uh, space on two, um, or I just did two on with the space in there. It didn't populate in, but here we have it, and we have it in here. Damn, how many times do we have it in here? That's kind of crazy. Let me hit OK to get off of that. One, two, three, four. That one's the wrong information. Uh, this one looks right. This one looks right. This one looks right. So we have four, five times in here. Only four of the five are actually the correct game. Let's continue on though. Oh, we got more. We've got six. We've got seven. All right. So seven times for the exact same title. And I'm seeing a lot of open seasons on here. So maybe I have to um, consider that there are a lot of duplicates in here. I wasn't seeing a lot of duplicates the way it was laid out before, but um, this is, I mean, seven of the exact same game and there's no variation to this particular title. Uh, there might be different, you know, arcade versions of it, but you're getting more or less the exact same experience out of these. So there's no reason to have seven versions or six if you count the one that's clearly mislabeled there because it had the wrong, um, video preview. So yeah, um, don't really know what to make of this in all honesty. Let's go back over here though. All right, guys, so here we are inside of 3D games. Now, 3D games are awesome because everything else on here is 2D games, whether it's arcade or from a game console collection, everything else was 2D. So these are the most advanced games. So I definitely want to check out some of these and see, or at least one of these to see what the performance is like on here. And Tekken 3 will probably be a good one. I want to see what that's all about. But Tekken 1, 2, and 3, all PlayStation 1 titles. Uh, and I'm familiar with all the pretty much all of these other titles as well. And these are all, again, uh, PlayStation titles. So we've got some Mortal Kombat in here, which is always good. Definitely a nice layout of games. 
I'm not seeing any duplicates here. No, everything looks pretty cleaned up in this particular collection so far. How many games do we have in here? Let's go through the entire collection. We've got some Grand Theft Auto in here, one and two. Um, FIFA Soccer 96, Army Men World War. And we're back down to Tekken, uh, one, two, and three there. So there's, what a strange game count. Hold on. That's weird. So it doesn't start with one ever. It starts with, what's the lowest number here? I think it was Tekken. No, it's not Tekken. Huh. Okay. Very weird. Maybe, maybe I'm just confusing myself. But we start with Tekken. That's number one in this collection. But if we go up, we end at 56. But we cross Tekken with a different number, too. So are they just running duplicates within here in a way that you don't really notice? Yeah, they are. Look at that. We start the list over again at 29. So then are there only 28 titles? Because then we jump into the second round of the same titles again. Looks like it. All right. So that's not something that we could really go off of. Because up until this point, I was just starting up here with the first game in each of these collections and just going like this and saying, okay, the last one's 56. I was trusting that, you know, everything in there was an actual count. But if we just doubled up all of these titles in here twice, then we don't truly have 56 3D games in here. So very, again, a weird and not a user-friendly way to lay all this stuff out. It's just very convoluted and, um, you know, confusing. So, Let's dive into some gameplay demos here, test out what the performance is like on this setup, and um, you know we'll, we'll gauge whether this is worth it or not off of that. All right, guys, so we just jumped out of this setup, and I have to say it was a very weird experience. Now, I love the idea of this product, and I love what they were trying to achieve here. They're trying to bundle a game console into a monitor setup so you can have a freestanding system, or you can connect it over to a TV or monitor. It gives you the portability end of things. It also gives you that home console sort of vibe where you could extend your experience onto a large screen if you wanted to. You're bundling two controllers together, so you're getting this you know, total uh, package deal. And then you're getting a ton of games as well. It's just firing on all cylinders, or at least the idea of it is. I think the gaming community, if it's done right and it's executed well, the gaming community would totally support something like this. Um, and especially at the price point, this only cost me $85 total with taxes included, which, you know, what else can you get for 85 bucks that comes with controllers, a monitor, a console, and has a ton of games? There's nothing comparable out there at that price point. Uh, if it was 150 bucks, then yeah, there might be some other options. But at 85 bucks, there's nothing that comes close to touching this. Um, and the performance was good here, but they dropped the ball and it totally ruined the experience. So first thing that we ran into here was, and I will say this as well, this is a nice screen. It's a nice setup. Is it super high quality? No, but it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, the picture quality is good. The sound quality is actually very good on here. There's no distortions. It gets very loud. You have the external volume control, you have the external ports so you can connect over to a TV or monitor via VGA or HDMI. It just has everything that you need 
to effectively dive into this. First issue was this, snapped right off in a matter of seconds. Now, did I you know, speed up the process of breaking this? Sure, I applied a little pressure to the top, but I could see as soon as I opened it up that it was starting to buckle under the weight of this entire setup. And this is a chunky setup. It's got some weight to it. So you can see where it actually snapped off. You can see this is the tab that uh, is still present on here. This didn't break. This side does not have that tab. That is what broke. That's what made this fall off in the back. So it's just not strong enough to support it. I mean, look how thin it is. Look how thick you know this is and how large this is. This is about an inch and a half thick. It's got some weight to it. It's not super heavy, but it's heavier than what this can obviously handle. Uh, and I did speed up the process. I applied a little pressure to test out, you know, the bounce on it. And it shouldn't be bouncy like that. It shouldn't be kind of shaking to hold the weight up. Uh, but I don't think that I did anything that nobody, that anybody else would have done. You know, if I let my kids use this, which this would be a great thing for kids to enjoy retro gaming on. If I gave this to my kids, they would have snapped it in half the time. I'm confident about that. Um, so they need to figure out how they can better this because this isn't cutting it. Uh, now, the other thing is, when we powered it on and we started navigating through the setup, it's an absolute mess. It's a disaster. Nothing's in alphabetical order, so locating titles is extremely difficult. It's not user-friendly. There is a search bar there, so you can actually type in titles of games, but it doesn't give you the ability to really explore on your own because you can't dive into a specific collection. Like if I wanted to look for um, arcade is littered throughout here. If I want to look for a Sega Genesis game, and it does have Genesis titles on here, how would I go about scrolling through the Genesis titles? There's no way to go in and locate just Genesis games because everything is thrown together. They do have uh, categories like fighting games, sports games, shooting games, 3D games, but that's a limited way of doing it, and it includes all of the collections that are available on here, or all of the console collections, rather. So it's a very tough way to navigate. If you know exactly what you're looking for, you type it into the search bar. I demoed that process for you guys. It's not a seamless process. You can see how the um, letters kind of jump all over the place. The H wasn't showing up properly. The um, sports games, it wasn't highlighting those properly. It's just a little bit wonky to say the least. But we were able to, to locate Sonic titles. As we did though, I started to notice that there were duplicates, but they weren't lined up next to each other. So like Sonic 2, for example, wasn't lined up in a row where it said Sonic 2, Sonic 2, Sonic 2, but there were duplicates of it. They would space it out so they're a page apart. So you may not notice it, you know, at first glance. And I didn't notice it really at first glance. I started thinking about it after a little while. Didn't I see that title before? And it turned out I did. But then we jumped into the search bar again and we looked for two on two open ice challenge. I typed in two on, hit search, nothing came up. Uh, I typed in open ice challenge or open ice and it did populate in. So kind of weird that the searching is very particular. Um, I literally typed in the first two parts of the title, nothing came up. I typed in the end of the title and it did come up. So weird there, but we found seven different um, versions of that game. And I'm not convinced that they're even different versions. I think that they're just straight up duplicates, seven of the same game. So we searched Sonic, we found multiples of each of the titles there. We typed two on two open ice challenge. We found multiples in there as well. And then we jumped into 3D games, which are basically PlayStation titles. And I went through the list over there and it looked like there were 56 games, but turned out that they just doubled up on a smaller list and they cycled through it. So if you're not paying close attention, which in the beginning I wasn't, you assume that you know, you have 56 games, but in all reality, you have half of that because they just put the same titles in there uh, on a loop twice. So we went through Tekken 1, 2, and 3. We went through a bunch of other titles. Then Tekken 1, 2, and 3 came up again. We just assumed we were all the way through the collection, but we still were seeing the number count go up. So they're obviously padding games and they're trying to cover it up. And they're actually doing a pretty decent job of covering it up by staggering their lists and hiding the duplicates. They're not putting them back to back. So at the end of the day, do we really have 26,800 titles on here? Or do we have a third of that? I believe we have a third of that at best. So when they're marketing it as this super high number, in all reality, it's not that at all. And you can see there's not a ton of different collections on here. It looks to be early uh, Genesis, early uh, NES or Nintendo uh, console collections. And then it seems to be arcade. And we also saw Neo Geo in there. That's about it though. There's no Saturn in here. There's no N64 in here. 
There's a couple PlayStation games, but it's pretty basic. I'm not mad at it for being basic, but it just doesn't have, you know, what you would think it would have based on that 26,800 um, title claim. So it's unfortunate. It's very easy to actually do this the right way, but you have to care. And I don't think that whoever created this really cared. I think they were just trying to push this to market and, you know, get people on their marketing, which is 26,800 games on a console built into a, a um, monitor with controllers included, which at 85 bucks, like I said, is a great deal. But are you truly getting what is advertised? I don't think so. So, um, and it doesn't matter if you were to add all these titles in here. So let's take, for example, Two on Two Open Ice Challenge. That's seven games that they're taking up space for. It's the same exact game seven times, but you're still using up the space of seven titles. Wouldn't you just do one and then add set or excuse me, six more games that were different. You're using the same amount of capacity on the card in the end. Just add more games, create a better product and make your customers happy. Unfortunately, that's not what happened here, but the idea of this is great. Hopefully somebody else picks up on the idea and executes it in a way that makes sense and, you know, creates a, a good experience in the end. But this ain't it. I wouldn't recommend it. I'll give you guys a link to this in the description of the video and up here at the top of your screen. So you can click over, learn a little bit more about it, but I wouldn't recommend it as it is, unless you're able to see something in these videos in, or in the um, video clips here that you know, you are really desiring. Uh, maybe you saw that you, maybe you're a King of Fighters fan and you want to dive into the 4,000 King of Fighters games that are on here. If that's the case, this might be a great option for you. If you want to go in here and you want to build your own, card to insert into this, you know, customize it yourself, then, then I could see getting something like this. But the way it is right now, turnkey, plug and play, it's definitely not good enough. But that's going to do it for today. Let me know what you guys thought in the end. Give me a thumbs up on the video if you enjoyed the content today. And of course, hit subscribe to stay in the loop for all future videos right here on the Retro Gaming Guy YouTube channel.